I'm talking about message and the proliferation of message. Uh, I was going to start with this example of going to New York City, which I'm going to get to. But I noticed back in the green room, had some M&Ms for us. And they actually have a message on them. I mean, even the M&Ms, right, telling me about TEDx. So it's way, it's way worse than we thought. But <laughs> on the way to New York, in the cab, you know, and there's this, I'm sure you all have seen it, there's the little screen right in front of you that's talking to you in the cab, you mute it. Get on the plane, same screen on the chair in front of you. Get off of the plane, go to the baggage claim, even bigger screen, trying to tell you more about other things. Then you go to the bathroom, even one in there, right? Another screen in there. Get on the cab, there's another screen. And then I finally got where I was going, which was Times Square, which looked like the hive that all of these screens were spawned from. <laughs> There's like a billion screens. And the people that run the place will even tell you that one of those is supposed to generate 1.5 million impressions in just one day. And there are a lot of them, you know? So that, all of those things, all of those messages, all of that communication that's trying to happen to you just as this sort of benign thing happens, or you go to get an M&M, and that is before you've even looked at your phone, right? That's before you've even gone and checked all of the things that people are trying to tell you via email or Twitter or Facebook or Vine or whatever it is. And this is one of the things about the communication. There's a lot of competition for our attention. And the rise of social media really just made that explode. Something like the top 17 social networking sites have 100 million users each. So that's like 1.7 billion users in that community. You know, just wiring people together. So you or I, we have an opportunity to say something that could potentially be heard or shared by like a million people through all of this social networking things. I think in 2003 there were like a handful of patents related to social networking sites. In 2010 it was about 1,200 and I think now you know, just three, four years later, there's like 7,000, right? And the thing about social media and communication is it used to be new, right? So something new comes out. You use this form of communication, and everybody notices because it's new, right? So novelty used to work. It's not the case so much anymore. I mean, the way that novelty used to work was you're, uh, you're sitting in the stadium, and the airplane flies over, right, with a banner that says, Eat at Joe's. And everybody in the stadium looks up because they had never seen an airplane fly over the stadium towing a message on it. And they all look up and it says, eat at Joe's. And the chances are people probably went and ate at Joe's after that because they got the message. Because there was only one plane and it's flying pretty slow, you know. So <laughs> the other thing that kind of compounds this sort of glut of communication we have is speed. You know, so first of all, there's a lot of different ways to disseminate your message. And then the dissemination of that message happens really, really fast, which is sort of a kind of developmental, it's not a vicious cycle because it's for the greater good. But, you know, we work together, we can collaborate quickly, and we work on another way to communicate that's even faster. And then we can make the next one even faster. And so speed begets novelty, begets speed, and these things just keep happening in like this tornado of how communications are speeding up. And it's creating a lot more of them. I mean, think in terms of speed. I don't know. I've, I've been, haven't really been checking my email today, but I bet I got 80, right? I mean, what is that in snail mail years? You know what I mean? <laughs> is that six months worth of me talking to another person, 87 pieces of mail? I mean, just think taking that out of the equation allows all of this collaboration to happen. Speed, 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 right? So that's good, right? We got a lot of ways to communicate with each other. They're very fast. They're different. You can kind of tailor the way you want to talk to people or if you're more of an Instagram or a Facebook or whatever. All this is good, right? Communication, the proliferation of communication, is making communicating easier. Right? But that's not the case because there's so much of it. 
there's such a blast of all of these things from Times Square to the thing on my M&Ms to all of the emails you guys are not returning and probably freaking out about. Um, all of that stuff is putting the onus back on what you're saying, right? So novelty and these things that used to work with communication, you could say eat it, Joe's. If you towed it behind the banner, you could do all of these things because no one had ever seen it. It got people's attention. They looked at it. They read it. They absorbed it. They got your communication. Now there is so much that in order for you to make an impact, for, order you, for your idea to have something that's going to get shared, that people are going to notice, that people aren't going to flip by as they go through the litany of things that they have to look at, is the message, you know? And what I believe is making the messages that work work is, is authenticity. You know, we've got all of this cold communication via text or you Skype somebody, which is always awkward. You know, it's not really a human interaction, but it is, and you're kind of, you're always watching yourself. So it looks, <laughs> so it looks weird because you're trying to check yourself out, but then you know you're supposed to be looking at this person, they're doing the same thing. All, all of these sorts of things and this speed and just this massive, just blast of digital everything has put this onus back on what are the things that are real? You know what I mean? What about what you're saying is genuine and is authentic? And we see this sort of cultural backlash happening with uh, putting value back on the things that, like, human beings have made or touched. You know, there's the farm-to-table movement. There is, in design, there's screen printing and letter pressing and doing all of these things that are, that are hand-wrought and, you know, take some time and some artistry and some thought and require a human being. Uh, for example, you could go down to uh, the hardware store, right? You could get an axe with like a carbon fiber handle made out of some steel alloy thing you've never heard of that stays sharp for a million years and weighs a half a pound. That thing will probably run you 40 bucks. Or there's like a place in Brooklyn where you can buy an axe that a guy whittled from a single piece of wood and, you know, they melted the lead or whatever they're using and poured it into the thing, and they made this axe themselves. And even though that axe, for what an axe is for, is not nearly the product that all of these robots shot out of the factory in Taiwan, it has more value. People are putting more value on those things, you know, that authenticity. So that being said, how do you then cut through all this clutter and, and use authenticity and use truth to, to talk about the things you want to talk about. It's a really exciting thing now is that, you know, prior really to this rise of social media and this networking of everyone's thoughts and ideas, the only people that could really control the information, the only people that could, you know, give a mass audience anything they wanted them to hear were large advertisers or media outlets or the government. I mean, these are the people that controlled what the conversation was. And that's changed now because now we control it, right? So now what you really have to think about is what your message is, you know? How are you going to use this ability that we have that used to just be reserved for the elite and these large corporations and people with money to get an idea to catch fire or to collaborate with somebody or to talk about the things you're passionate about or talk about the things that you need to change because now we all have that ability to get out there and sort of motivate people or talk about what is important to us through the social media. So really the thing that's the most important about this is your message. So I think we all got to think about what your message is going to be. Thank you.